Akira and Oches. So here we are at the Picks and Bands. We're going to have Rise from Ashes coming out with the first band this time. And let's see what these guys go ahead and open up with. We saw Marana as a starting band last game. Will we see that again is the question. Um, and nope, we're going to see the Doom band after seeing how well Doom was played last game. And that was going to be, I believe, Shiraz on Doom last game. So now, waiting for this Feast for Crows ban, uh, these guys, Ten it's going to be three. interesting to see how Feast for Crows decides to ban uh, after the last game. Uh, Five seconds they are going to get rid of the Ancient Apparition right off the bat. They don't Dark want RMB having that uh, again, because that was just an annoyance for them overall. Um, and there's the Murata ban in the second round, and we're going Radiant to see Feast for Crows man. probably answer back. Um, these guys... I could see, d d d d d d I could see an Invoker ban, just for the fact that Doom is out of the pool now. Um, we'll see what they decide Ten to go with. Remaining. If Invoker does not get banned here, oh, Lycanthrope gonna be banned. That's uh, uh, he's, he's not as strong as he used to be, but he's still pretty damn strong. Uh, his transition gonna make him absolutely Invoker. crazy. Uh, his transformation, Radiant and there it is—the Invoker coming out first. As I called it from RFA. And you didn't miss nice much, call. buddy. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back. Thanks. Uh, I, I figured I you wouldn't mind if I just jumped in. You no, no, not up. at all. I mean, Doom Ban was quite obvious there, in my opinion, from Rise from Ashes. They got stumped hard in the other game by Ten the seconds Doom. remaining. Um, so nice to use it there of him. Five Farming up very remaining. fast. And now um, that they've banned Doom, that really does open Invoker up. And uh-oh! Uh-oh! Radiant team pick. That's the Bat Rider we've talked previously. <laughs> we are going to see Jet Street playing the Bat Rider this, in the off lane this game. This is going to be intense. We may even see a Sand King support coming out. Yeah, um... Don't know if... Well, usually against Feast for Crows, um... I would like to play against the bottom more than against the bad rider. <laughs> Ten seconds remaining. To be honest. So. Oh the man, these Dying guys getting pick. two of the heroes that were banned out last game. Uh, they were the first two bans, I believe, from Rise from Ashes last game, and now Feast for Crows picks them up. Is it worth the Doom ban, giving these guys their preferred heroes? Well. I don't know, but we will see how good Invoker will match up against the OD in mid. The Lycan ban, I like it, uh, because Five he's from Crows is on the Radiant side. Uh, Dire side Lycan is very strong because he can Reserve sneak time. into the Roche pit very easy. Um, everything else, Lycan, still a good hero, but you don't necessarily have to ban him when you are playing on Dyer's side. Now, so. waiting for this next pick, we have the mid. We have we may see the off lane now that they know Batrider is going to be there. Yeah, maybe they could go. They can still go greedy with the Batrider into the jungle. Um, put another off lane there and only let dual lane. With uh, single support to uh, carry, but yeah, the Feast for Crows opted to pick two of the cores first, so they are giving a lot away from the draft already. So Rise from Ashes are now able to opt for a good hero. Oh, uh, Vengeful seems decent, Dark good against the Bad Rider engagement with the Lasso. You can still swap with the target out of the lasso to break it. You can stun the bad rider so he isn't able to when his when he blinks onto you and lasses is not able to force remaining. stuff away. So nice pick up there. Five seconds mm -hmm. remaining. Now um, the question is who are they gonna go with their second support? Will we see a reserve time? I mean it's gonna be it's gonna be a hard call. I think maybe a dazzle would fit well. Um Especially with the presence of Batrider. 
Yeah, that's yeah, that's true. That's a little, it's definitely a good choice. This way, God forbid go they don't. The God forbid the Venge swap doesn't yeah. isn't on in there in time. At least Daz Is will be able to shallow that? grave the person in the lasso. Yeah, but usually, uh, if they they're just opting for the game plan, probably with okay, we got a Venge as the count on the bad rider. So you don't want to pick another hero. So you don't want to pick two heroes as a counter on, uh, onto one, but Dazzle is also Radiant not that Demon bad Man. against OD. But we will see. Uh, with the Venture, you can still go on an aggressive try line. Therefore, Dazzle can still be good. Okay. Hmm. In this particular, okay. <clears throat> Ten seconds These remaining. These pros not banning Dazzle X. We've seen. Venge Death Legs aggressive trial and played by Mosswords previous week and it was very very Reserve strong. Time. But yeah, we will see if they go aggressive or not. Fresh from really that was actually played that was actually played this week? Yeah. Wow, look at that. I'm better than I thought. I don't need to watch games. It, don't don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> I know what ha I know what happened to the pro level. <laughs> you know the meta. I know the meta. <laughs> 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 okay, in, in, in two weeks we will see this and this hero because the meta will shift into this direction and stuff like that. Yo. So you know it. <laughs> Yo, listen, I don't even need patch notes, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> patch notes, what uh. is that? <laughs> so here we go, we got the fourth ban for Feast for Crows. These guys being very choosy about this one. Yeah. As, well, Rise from Ashes also took very long to for those two bands. Slaughter, it's okay. Disrupt is a very good pen in, uh, band in my team opinion. Pick. A good team fight hero. The Glimpse can screw up a lot of things. Dire team pick. Oh man, Gyrocopter. I swear to God, if I call him Corky once. <laughs> <laughs> if I call a Gyrocopter Corky once, I'm cut. Okay, I will count. How often you will say? How about sport. hey, peaceum? Uh, by the time you hear this, it'll be five minutes after I say it. But if you want us to cast Join Dota games, you should go talk to the Join Dota people about letting us Ten cast them. Seconds remaining. What do you think about that one, buddy? Five seconds remaining. I would love remaining. to cast some Join Dota games. So if yeah, I mean, once in, in fact, I would love for the Join Dota Reserve game time. if Join Dota just merged with our league. What? <laughs> and we just cover it. Even better, even better. Because uh, I right. think our format might be a little bit better, but we'll we'll check it out. We'll talk, we should talk to them. Though. Radiant uh, team pick. Anyway, the Tide Hunter coming out probably gonna be in the off lane, and probably yeah. Uh, it's gonna be interesting. We still we got the gyrocopter as the carry, I believe. Most likely, yeah. I mean, we've all. Sustain Gyrocopter on the spot. Wow. Time to time. Well, yeah. Rubik is a good choice, a very good choice. Very, uh, very. A lot of good uh, spells to steal. The swap, the ravage. Can, now, can he, can, can, he actually, can he actually steal the uh, invoker Sp spells? Yeah, sure. Yeah, you steal the last spell uh, he casted, so if he's casting. Sunstrike, he is still Sunstrike if he's causing Deepening Blast. And yeah, Life Lifesteal a good choice though. I like it against the Rubik and the Charo. The Ravage is. Uh, the Rage, not the Ravage, the Rage is very good against this CC oriented Ten seconds lineups. Really. But yeah, Bad Rider Lasso still goes through to Rage, so. We'll see. Um, with the Vengeful and the Tide Hunter pick up there, they can go for another physical hero there. Maybe Witch Doctor. I was thinking about a Witch Doctor, but I I don't know. I mean, mm, hard and to Desil say. Is also Dazzle is also still a very very good. Yeah, character. I mean that's what I was thinking. I was either Witch Doctor or Dazzle, and I I went with that uh, personally Dazzle. I mean I thought about the stun, the bouncy stun, and the yeah. DPS out of the totem, and the heal. But well, engine operation is banned, so the heal is definitely reliable. So that's a Ten good choice. Though. 
Um, the bouncing stun you can't calculate Five it, remaining. so it's also like it uh, during the laning uh, stage. And his um, radiant team pick ultimate also deals physical damage. When for spirit has a minus armor, tied onto has minus armor. So uh, that's a good combination there. But the dazzle, okay, they uh, bent the pick. dazzle on their own. And Sand King. And do 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 You wanted it, you got it. Do 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 Now we we have to get the single button only to play Sandstorm every time somebody picks Sand King or uh actually cast Sandstorm. Ten seconds remaining. That's an inside joke, guys. If you haven't been here yet. Uh, actually, yeah, Reddit just hates us, though. Uh, Reddit, <laughs> Reddit hates us. Yeah. We're not good with Reddit. <laughs> yeah, we kind of got, we kind of gave up on Reddit because they block our Ten stuff. Seconds remaining. But I gotta say, that I, I called it, didn't I? The Sand King support early. Yeah. And woo, Nyx in the off lane. team pick. Or Nyx support. Because Tidehunter can uh. go support, right? Yeah. Both not a strong, not a uh, strong support, but he is a support. Um, probably better choice uh, tied to put tight in the offland than the Nyx Assassin because he will go up against the Chiro Rubik Sand King. And the Nyx Assassin, yeah, he's a, he has a spike carapace, but there's a free stunt. You can't spike carapace free stunt. You're yeah. right, that but is, that is Kira, true. It's Kira picking up the Nyx Assassin, so they will go for the offland Nyx, it seems. All right, and here we go. Um, this is gonna be interesting. Ten seconds remaining. Well, both teams have some very aggressive Five seconds remaining. setups there. I gotta say, I like well, the life stealer. We haven't seen a life stealer in a minute. That's true. Uh, for free feast for crows, I have to say both Batra and Sand King can farm up the items very fast in the jungle with a few stacks. So, yeah, that's why they are going as five to secure their own jungle. And rise from ashes, or maybe, hopefully, we will see a clash in the dire jungle there. We very well may see a very early uh, invade here. I expect every hero on Radiant to be flying. <laughs> 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 they didn't see the. Uh, they, they didn't get to the Rubik and Sand King yeah, yeah. yet. That would be funny. That would be s s feast for crows, all uh, flying. Oh, here's the clash! There's the Rubik gonna go ahead and slam down the Nyx. Nyx landing a great life stun. The Corky damage coming out, and it looks like we're gonna have a full on engage here. There goes first one. Gyrocopter gonna pick it up. Nyx gonna be taken down here, no problem as well. Uh, there is Batrider just keeping these guys off, and now we have Nyx trying to run. He's trying to get out of there. He's not. Oh, he's using the tangos, and not. He gets the stun. <laughs> and not gonna go be able to get anything out of that, but nice job. They, Beast for Crow is gonna go ahead and secure their jungle and get two kills before mi creeps even spawn. Yeah, nice anticipation there by them. Because the, the jungle is the biggest resource they have, Feast for Crows, on um, income More with Batrider and Sand fire. King sitting in there. So both teams <laughs> knew it and both teams uh, wanted to get control of it. Now we see Venge going in with the two Observer Wards, but he, she already got spotted out there, so maybe we've seen... Okay, no. We we probably will see a counter ward coming out very shortly from Sand King. Yeah, Shiras has two sentries in his inventory, and he already pinged out this Observer spot, so... And now Venge is trying to stop him from dewarding. We may have another fight here as Tidehunter's coming in. Uh, meanwhile, Life Stealer in lane now, um, gonna be going ahead. Doesn't have any last hits. The, the support's fighting in the side uh, of the jungle, and there it is. Uh, two wards being placed, and nice ward, counter ward placement by Sand King. He's gonna be able to pick up both of them. Yeah, I'm not quite sure why they put both there. <laughs> okay. Some misplay there. And there it is. the best state, uh, start you can have 
Yeah, right smashes. Oh, there's the stun coming in from Sand King. Rubik gonna go ahead, stop, slow him down, and Venge is gonna go down here, but we may see uh, Sand King go down as well. Um, if they can't slow him, and looks like he's gonna be able to get away that healing cell. Gonna go ahead, there's the stun, and now they turn around, and Gyrocopter gets his third kill already. You remind me of my old One and a half minutes into the game, 3-0. 4-0. And there it is, Venge is gone too. See you later. Feast for Crows with the super aggressive lineup. Going for the quick win, I think. Wow. <laughs> GG already! <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh my god. Yeah, you. Okay. I mean, I totally get it. It was some um, over. Okay. I don't know how serious they are. I really don't know how, how serious they are, but that might have been the fastest match of Dota in history. Yeah, most likely. And, uh, and we are going to highlight that as the two minute GG. <laughs> <laughs> we are highlighting that later. Yeah, definitely. Even if they finish the, <laughs> even if they finish the game, we're highlighting it. Uh, so fake GG. <laughs> Uh, um, but in Rise from Ashes... Rage GG! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, but I still want to call the 2 minute I'm still making the highlight of the 2 minute rage. Because that is like the strongest 2 minute start. And Invoker just picked up a kill on with a Sunstrike there on the top lane. I heard it come out, but I didn't know that they were fighting. So he's going to go ahead and actually picks up the kill on Jetstream. That's a very unusual thing. Definitely. So, so we actually have Nixon mid versus OD rather than Invoker. Yeah, Nix is a very good pick against the OD because the mana burn, even though it's only on level two, is still do, uh, do, is already doing over 200 damage against the OD. So a uh, very good pickup. Uh, OD can't kill the Nix because of the spike caribus, and he is able to get his early level six. So. Well anticipated, but Invoker against Bat Rider is well usually fearing the Bat Rider. Well, Invoker getting a kill there is definitely one of the best things for him. <coughs> but in what I wanted to say previously was in Rise from Ashes uh, current situation, I would have let Tidehunter solo down there. I mean, they've already given enough space to the Chirocopter and enough kills um, only letting the tide under there and securing farm on the range and the life stealer that could Seems be the downfall be yeah. Yeah. and Chiro's rotating in uh oh right there's the Seg gig he's there he wants to get something done oh he might go in on oh no black what are you doing there's the stun Rubik gonna come in and raise him up Oh, not gonna be able to get there in time, but there's Gyrocopter. Uh, oh, n there it is. Gyrocopter does manage to snipe out the kill. Land, stay down. So Gyrocopter, I mean, what has he got already? Five and oh, five minutes in. One <laughs> k in face boots. Uh, pre five minute minutes. It's incredible. And a basilisk ring. Yeah. Uh, I'm curious to see what Invoker is opting to build. He's sitting at nearly 2k gold. Bad Rider definitely going for either Tranquil Blink or immediate loop Blink first. Let's see. Oh! Yeah, this sounds like a mid lane. <laughs> nice map coverage there from Invoker. I didn't even <gasps> didn't even know. And Sand OD popped his bottle before dying. And now the Nyx Assassin has his bottle. Nyx Assassin has OD's bottle. Uh, okay. <laughs> can he use okay. it? Uh, he can use it, yeah. Can he refill it? <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. King. That's not good. Looks like he might be able to get out of there using that magic wand. There's the Sun Strike. Gonna be missed. No, yeah. no good there. I gotta say. Um, I don't know whether Sand felt bad for Nyx <laughs> and, gave, and was like, here's a yeah. bottle, <laughs> you ain't getting no yeah, farm. Take my bottle. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't got a farm, take my bottle. You see? Now he has a bottle. 
Because he, he is getting it beat out and farm really, really hard in the last hit department. Sam might have just trolled a little bit. Uh, don't know if it was intended, but usually you don't want to keep your opponent in the middle in your own bottle. Yeah, it's Nyx. <laughs> and Shara's doing a decent job there. No. Pulling and getting some XP in his own jungle. I mean, he's got five kills and 20 last hits up on this uh, life stealer right now. I mean, nothing, nothing you can do right now, life stealer. Uh, I think you are right. Oh, Invoker gets another kill. Uh, I believe in the top lane with some help from Venge onto Bat Rider. Uh, this has got to be Jetstream's worst game we've ever seen so far. Yeah, especially on Bad Rider, that's usually not something we see. I mean, Venture Spirit rotated in the perfect time there, and in both of those, but the Midas. There so is Tidehunter getting dropped so down, and another kill going to Gyrocopter. Oh my god, this Gyro is gonna get out of control. But yeah, Invoker is uncontested. Is on he top going for early? Midas. Is he going for a super early BKB with that uh, Ogre Club? It seems so, but it's not the choice, usually, because uh, PKP too early is can be uh, crucial for your own good. And there it is, the Gyrocopter taking 2 versus 1 with Nyx. Now we do see the ultimate coming down, and boom goes the dynamite, Gyrocopter gets another kill, Nyx with the mini stun, there is the sun strike, yeah, Invoker gonna pick up the kill there. Uh, and now we do see Tidehunter is gonna be forced to run back. Nyx able to help out and get a kill. Invoker may be what this, what Rise from Ashes relies on. This game is so intense. It's incredible. I mean, Invoker, Invoker will, if Rise from Ashes is able to <laughs> turn around this game, it's definitely on the shoulders of Invoker. Yeah, the rest of his team's not getting anything. I mean, the Feast for Crows, 3,000 gold ahead and 1,000 experience ahead currently. Yeah, but the Smoke is still uncontested with his Midas, so in 2 or 3 levels he's gonna have 2 Forge Spirits and then he's able to push very, very fast. Uh, Kiron with the Nyx Assassin is on the bottom lane spotting out Chiros. We got a uh, Chiros now sees him because of the sentry. We. <laughs> <laughs> and there throws. Throws him down. There is the the stun. It's coming out very short, slow, but surely. And there, both of them get stunned. But Nick's gonna get stunned for a little bit longer, allowing Gyro Capture to escape. And there's the blink right. dagger coming out from Sam. No, so we may see some ganks itself. coming out here very shortly. Regardless of getting pooped on in the top lane, he is actually uh, maintaining, keeping a decent time. He got his blink dagger about a minute later than he usually does. Yeah, pretty 10 minutes blink dagger on the offlane, and even though he died two times, is a good, a very good timing. Um, now he's able to maybe get some rotations by a smoke. I think we're gonna see Invoker buying a force staff first with the pickup of the staff of wizardry. Either force staff or yules. One of those two things. And I heard a sun strike in the top lane. Yeah. There it is. And wow, Batrider just getting no, shut down. Jetstream not having a happy day. No, the sun strike meteor deep blast combination one shots the Batrider. His invoke is now is already level 11, and he has eight points. Uh, six points, not eight points. <laughs> uh, six points into exit, so his spells deal a hell out of damage. Oh wow. Absolutely. I mean, a 412 damage sun strike and level 10. Huge. Yeah. That's almost half of anyone's health on the map right now. Yeah. And uh, we got the smoke on top. Bad radar, probably blink, lots of all invoker. It's gonna be followed up by Shiraz. And there's the epicenter, I believe, going off. They are gonna pick up the kill here on. At least Invoker, now Ven's trying to get out, but the Tar gonna go ahead and stop her from being able to turn. Uh, OD comes in, picks up the kill, uh, saving his, or actually going ahead and taking down uh, Tidehunter as well, so uh, Feast for Crows is 
really, really going hard uh, on these guys now. And we have, looks like Kira going in, wants to get the kill on Shuras. Rubik just got the kill on, on Life Stealer, and we did have Kira with a double damage pop uh, pick up the kill there on to Sand King. Now going to be put into the outer dimensions here, and now it looks like Sand Chase. Look at the damage. Five hits. Five. By the gods, the dial oh! tower doesn't even have arms to defend. The itself. Bat Rider finally able to recover Breeze something. Tower. Yeah. Well, yeah. This this Chirocopter. Dial's bottom tower. Melting that bottom tower. bottom tower. He's gonna take yeah. it right now. I'd be surprised yeah. if he doesn't. Yeah, By enough. The there he goes. You get drums on the killer before finishing the BKB, so it's not that early, but he's still able to. Uh, get something done with his gold, uh, some good early mid ag uh, aggressive items. Because if you get the PKP too fast, you then you're 30 minutes into the game and only have a 5 seconds PKP instead of a 10 seconds, and then it's already useless. So, good choice to not going for the PKP, building a kilo drums first. Um, Batrider has his lasso up with Flink Dagger sitting on middle lane. Invoke is now and on you middle were lane and life steal. I gotta, I gotta hand it to you, up. by the way. I gotta hand it to you. You called the Yules on Invoker. You got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, well, uh, both items are very decent on Invoker. I mean, four stuff is very good against uh, Sand King, Batrider, and. Everything against uh, if you are getting engaged upon, but until now he's had free farm, and with the Yules he he can go for solo pickups because Yules is a 100% uh, sunstrike hit. This uh oh, and Boker gonna get grabbed. There's the steal, and boom goes the dynamite. Ravage gonna be popped off, but Batrider takes out a Boker, and it looks like OD takes out Venge, and they are going hard, and they're gonna also get the kill there up to Tidehunter. And Feast for Crows just gonna go ahead and melt this middle tower. Maybe even push to a T2 now that Invoker is down. Yeah, Rubik did a very good choice. Uh, did a very good job there, stealing the deepening class from Invoker, saving every enemy, sitting on the mid lane, and the OD damage is just incredible huge. He's already level 11. And now probably going for a BKB on his own, already having his Ogre Club. Better I don't force to get put to go into his own jungle farm a little bit up there. Only 200 gold short for his four stuff. Uh, good ti timing there. Now Oches here in the top lane. These guys gonna be on bottom lane. Oh, and down in bottom lane. Oh, Invoker, so close. Actually, does take down Gyrocopter. So you're right. It's gonna be up to this Invoker. Can he do it? Is the question. But there's a swap from Bench. The Invoker. Oh, coming out from Rubik. And now these guys gonna turn it right around and pick up a double kill here in the top lane. No problem. The Radiant should really. They're looking at OD just going right in tight under. Boom, gets the one hit. Falling back out. The oh, nice prediction on the haste. That was an excellent play, really Sunstrike, with the haste being popped off there by OD. And now we do have, looks like, Nick's gonna pick up the kill here on the Sand King. Uh, Sand King buys back, and now Rubik gonna be falling back. Uh, or maybe these guys are gonna reinitiate. Uh, Petro should have used his force off. Yep. I don't think he had it at the fight. He had it. Did he? he? Had it. Yeah, he had it when he lost to Nick's assassin. Just now, I think they would have been able to get a return kill on the next assassin there. Well, unfortunate turn okay. of events for, uh, for Rubik. Those guys. Yeah, uh, Rubik has been able to steal Infest, a very good spell there to steal, especially with a bat rider on his team. He just infests into the bat. Oh man! Now. <laughs> and now we have a blink lasso engaged with a Rubik bomb. Uh, the middle lane. Oh man, this Titan is not having a good time there. No, but also we are gonna see. Oh, the body block. A vengeful spear gonna go down, and Nick's still there. Um, Nick's gonna be very patient here. 
may go on to Shiraz. We'll see. There it is. Goes in for the stun and does pick up the kill there on Shiraz. Hey, bug to bug. <laughs> Don't bug me. I'm bugging you. <laughs> oh, man. So Jetstream going to be looking like he's going to be checking. Just waiting to see if anyone's going to go check a ward. Still flying around with Rubik in there. Yeah. Does Rubik, uh, uh, does Rubik gain experience while he's in there? Um, well, I don't know exactly. That's something I don't know. <laughs> right? Like, does anybody know? Does Rubik, does the, does the hero inside? Yeah, if in fast, if you st get XP through in fast, I'm not quite sure. And now we have the call from, oh uh, Tidehunter to go in through like there uh, they, they w maybe want to go ahead and check the jungle to see what gyrocopter is up to yeah he's only 200 gold shot for his pkp this gyro and with the pkp invoker can't do anything against him because uh, before it got patched uh, the evening blast went through pkp uh, the silence and the disarm so he can't he isn't able to attack but the patch did now Invoker doesn't have a single spell which goes through BKB. So just one tip, if you're playing public and you're playing against Invoker, get a BKB and he can't do anything against you. Sure has uh, going for the assassination up. Yeah. Ooh. Life There's stealer life. Yeah. with Nyx in him? Oh my god, this could be bad. Not the sentry, not the sentry. <laughs> oh no! They know he's there! And there's Batrider going in on Shafil! He's gonna go ahead and get melted, and now Oche is gonna go get beat up down too. Uh, looks like Invoker's trying to run, but there's Jetstream gonna go ahead and tar him down. Uh, gets the force stab there uh, from OD, and Lifestealer actually picked up a kill there on the Rubik, but now they're falling back. Uh, Sam A gonna pick up a kill on the Nyx. Uh, these guys just gonna go ahead and. These guys just gonna ahead and take the top tower. All T1 towers are now down for our FA. top tower has fallen in battle. Yeah, very good execution there by Feast for Crows. Just starving the enemies, getting every T1. No, they're gonna go out. either Roche or another T2. But yeah, the double damage on the OD just attack. secured them the fight. Dyer's oh, Ben's going in, gonna be. Miss the Sand King, Sand King. Oh, there's the core deal. Bomb going down, Ravage going down. The Invoker Meatball hitting Gyro Counter pick up the kill onto Venge and Invoker onto OD, but that's about all that has happened. These guys pretty much walking away clean other than that. Uh, Tidehunter almost going down, and now we have, looks like Nyx with the Vendetta up trying to get a hunt for a kill. Who will he find? That is the question. He does run into Shiraz, but will he be able to follow up on him? Oh, goes in a Batrider! Hey, with the Dagon, finishes him off. Has seen better days. <laughs> Getting a Dagon. And there is yeah. the Gyrocopter BKB. Oh, it's quite interesting to see Invoker Radius go for an Dagon in Scepter. Even I feel though we place uh, Quas Exort. Because usually with Quas Exort, you don't go for the fast Dagon in Scepter because you're not. Um, Casting that many spells in a row, because usually you have Forge Spirits, Cold Snap, uh, and the Sunstrike. But it seems like he wants to cast some spells there. Eh. <laughs> oh yeah, man! Uh, Gyrocopter already has his BKB up, so double damage. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting. Um, Scepter cooldown. Oh my god. His cooldown mana cost zero. Yeah. That's huge. And there it is. Oh, it looks like Jetstream uh, gonna go ahead and invoke her. Just gonna melt Sand King. Sure is gonna go ahead and trade for. Uh, we're, they're gonna just trade support for support there. By the gods. And. Oh my god. I do believe. <laughs> Rubik, Rubik just stole Vendetta off of Nyx. And now we see the, the stun. And look at this, we may see Rubik go out onto Venge. Oh my god, there's Venge. 
and Ruben gonna go on Vendetta on top of the Nyx Assassin! And the Nyx gonna get stun uh go ahead and stun with the spike carapace. BKB going off and Invoker gonna go ahead and get auto attack down using the Yule Scepter on himself, letting those uh minions do the damage for him. Uh looks like we are gonna see Gyrocopter BKB. He does get taken down. Uh gold gets split, the Sun Strike gonna be missed. And there is Batrider able to slow the Invoker down. Gonna go ahead and blink out and teleport away. Nice job getting into those trees. And there is Shiraz uh, still just may get hunted here by the Nyx. The Nyx doesn't have enough bear excuse me, to secure a kill, but he may be able to at least get out of there. And there it is. We have uh, OD gonna go ahead and take down Lifestealer. Um... I mean, R RFA really needs to, to really consider how they're playing their team fights. Um, OD secured the... Oh, Failed nice. Sun Strike. But there is the epicenter. OD got to pick up the kill on Venge and now Invoker. Oh, so close. There's the dust. And an OG picks up Nyx's ass. And nice! Ice Wall! But it's not enough. Uh, Shiras. Very well played with the ultimate stun combination on the invoker. Dyer's bottom tower is while OD was you. And now we are gonna see this bottom T2 tower go. Dyer's bottom tower. Yeah, now the Roche pit is open. They got a ward over there. So to see every rotation, Dyer team wants. I, I I really think these guys are just gonna go whoop. Like take down the mid tower real fast and then go take down the top tower. Just systematic. And you do not get XP if infested. Okay. I was Thanks. <laughs> I was just attack. informed. It has no arms to defend itself. And now I heard the drums go off, but we are just gonna see the systematic tower takedown of towers. Oh, and it looks like we have Nyx getting caught out and burned alive. Now uh, the life stealer trying to get onto this Dyer's Rubik. Rubik gonna be four staff out of there. And there is the Ravage. Not gonna be enough. Batrider taking down Tidehunter. Uh, OD on the bench and Gyrocopter on the life stealer. These guys middle tower is under just gonna be walking over. I think that's GG there. Invoker wasn't there. There's middle tower. Only core part the from Rise from Ash is doing its best, actually, but it doesn't look good. Uh, can have an impact on the game. Wasn't in that fight, so. We'll see. They, they haven't top gotten high ground. Under attack. Oh, that's got to hurt. So. Literally, Peace for Crows is taking one tower at a time. They're just like, yep, we're just gonna roll through. Dyer's top tower is Rose under attack. But no one of them got a mechanism until now. I think with this game plan, a mechanism is something to look out for. Because, uh, yeah, you get one tower mid. Pop the mechanism, get the tower on top, everybody is full HP. But they are about full HP anyway. And Sand King only 1000 gold away from getting a BKB on his own. The Dyer's top tower is doing its best, but it's Now there is a 15,000 gold split. Nice last one. Oh, uh, apparently I call him Corky. Uh, anyway, nice use there by Invoker. Oatline taking out this vent. Uh, there. Looks like Nyx goes ahead. Oh, the, the attempt on the swap, but Nyx wasted his spike carapace. Now we have Tide Hunter gonna go down, and now oh, Life Stealer gets the kill, but not gonna be able to walk out of there alive as this tower goes down. Uh, Nyx still alive, able to get out of there. The Slack saying GG now, uh, and there is the final GG. So Feast for Crow is gonna go ahead and win this one. Radiant victory. Still undefeated, the Feast for Crows here in the Deathmatch Radio 5 vs 5 Dota 2 League. Very well played by the Invoker, I have to say. Even though Rise Fire just, just got caught off guard with the aggressive try Yeah, they just, I mean, Feast for Crows coming out with that 5 kills in the first 2 minutes. Whoa. Yeah. Just, whoa. Uh, yeah. Getting 4-0 on Charicopter pre-2 minutes is definitely too much to handle. I mean, the OD, the OD was also incredible. The damage you put on the desk was immense. Uh, when they secured the tier top, uh, tier 1 on top, 
with the DD damage that was just okay. He pops his ultimate, attacks every hero once, and three people are dead. <laughs> well, guys, that's it for Deathmatch Radio Dota 2 Europe today. We will be back on air with League of Legends North America later tonight with viewer games. My name is Vio on video, and this is Mr. Hagabuta. So, we are signing off, Fragger Be Frag. We're watching you.